We are very happy to have uh, uh, Basim Eid, a, uh, an exceptionally talented activist about whom we've heard a great deal, to have him here this afternoon. He is now on a trip uh, around the United States, establishing relations and talking about his field of concentration. Uh, he, he is the founder and director of the Palestine Human Rights Monitoring Group, which was founded only last year and already has established a name for itself and for its effectiveness in the occupied territories and including the liberated territories. Uh, Mr. Aid has uh, worked with Bet Salem for nine years and was their major seven, seven years. And they were, he was their major researcher in, uh, in connection with the violation of human rights of Palestinians. And those of you who are familiar with uh, Bet Salem reports, you can assess uh, the uh, large contribution he made to that excellent effort. And he is the author of a number of works that uh, are available in English and in Arabic on human rights in Palestine, which is the subject of this afternoon. We will uh, have a presentation of roughly between 20 minutes to 30 minutes and then the rest of the time for discussion and questions. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Hisham. It's really my great honor to be among you today to try to express freely my opinions, my thoughts, and my views without any limitations. As you know, we suffered for a long time from the Israeli occupation during the last 30 years. My people were killed, our houses demolished, our land confiscated, and some of my people even expelled to outside. And after the Oslo Agreement, we thought that the Palestinian authority that we are going to receive is the authority which is going to protect all of these rights violated by the occupation. But we noticed from the beginning that the Palestinian Authority start practicing a very similar violations that we faced from the Israelis. And the problem is that most of the Palestinian human rights organizations keeping silence on the abuses committed by the Palestinian Authority and most of them are still focusing and monitoring the Israeli abuses. I am as a Palestinian who defended the same people from the occupation decided on July 96 to resign from Bethlehem, to create the 20th Palestinian Human Rights Organization, but to, de to deal much more deeply and seriously by the violations committed by the Palestinian Authority. It was not so easy to, to persuade people 
and to bring them to be a kind of a board of trustees or a kind of a board of directors because everybody is worried everybody is afraid to talk about the violations committed by the Palestinian Authority tens of journalists arrested by the Palestinian Authority four human rights activists arrested by the Palestinian Authority professors and academics arrested by the Palestinian Authority who else not arrested by the Palestinian Authority we put I personally put all of my efforts in terms to create a board of trustees and a board of directors. Four people from the Palestinian Legislative Council are members on our board of trustees. Among them is Dr. Haider Abdul Shafi. And officially, we established the organization on the 9th of December 96. And we start running towards the human rights abuses without any political views. Just a pure human rights activity we are doing. And this is why some of the people are so surprised about the work that we are doing. We start publishing reports in Arabic and in English. In English, we are publishing only 1,000 copies. But in Arabic, we are publishing 15,000 copies. Because we are believed that the pressure must have to be from inside on the Palestinian Authority and not from outside. So for the Palestinian Authority, there is no problem to publish reports in English and to send them to Britain or to Chicago or to California. But the major problem is when you are publishing such reports in Arabic and you distributing them in the refugee camps. It means that you are inciting the society against its own authority. And as you know, our leadership in the Palestinian Authority grown up and developed under a dictatorship countries. They developed and grown up in Egypt, not in Britain, in Sudan, not in France, in Algeria, and not in Italy. So for the leaders, criticism means that you are slandering and defaming your own authority. And criticism means that you are serving the interests of the enemy. So you become a collaborator for the Israelis who might be, might be a collaborator for the CIA. <coughs> they will never accept any kind of criticism. And when we are criticizing the authority, we are bringing evidence here. Our reports based on research, a field research, on testimonies from the victims themselves, not from anybody else. We are living in the terror place. We are not outside the authorities. We are not receiving information through the facts and the internet. We are feeling the suffering of the Palestinian people. Since the coming of the Palestinian Authority on May 94, until now, 19 Palestinians died in custody. As you know, after each case, 
the Palestinian Authority announced that a committee appointed to investigate the circumstances. But until now, we never heard about any conclusions or any recommendations of those committees. Torture is widespread in the Palestinian jails. In the past, we suffered from the Israeli torture. Today, the both authorities are practicing the torture on the same people. People who are living in Area B, the joint area between the Israelis and the Palestinian Authority, sometimes they are arrested by the Palestinian Authority for six months without charges, without trial, and one week after they released, they arrested by the Israelis. So the rights of the Palestinians becomes today between the Israeli Hamar and the Palestinian Authority Iraq. People kept in jail for more than one year without charges, without trial. We understand that there is a kind of pressure from the United States and from Israel on the Palestinian Authority to oppress the terrorism. But not everybody arrested is a terrorist. The Palestinian Authority today, since the last year, stopped torturing any political prisoners. And the, all of the people who are facing torture today in the Palestinian jails are people who committed a civilian offenses, drug dealers, as an example, collaborators, land dealers, and car thieves. Is the United States putting pressure on Arafat to torture a car thieves? What we know that the United States even trying to protect the land dealers who are arrested by the Palestinian Authority. So which kind of pressure the Palestinian states, the, 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 the United States is putting on the Palestinian Authority? We understand the miserable political situation which the Palestinian Authority is located in. But on the other side, the Palestinian Authority, even before its coming <coughs> to the territories, they committed themselves to respect the old standards and the old uh, uh, principles of the human rights. So why you are torturing today? Why you are giving the community the feeling that you are coming to the territories to protect the Israeli security and not to protect the Palestinian community rights? As you know, so many reports already released by the local organizations and the international organizations on the Palestinian Authority abuses. But when the Amnesty released a report, the Palestinian Authority response was that it's a political report. What does it mean, a political report? The amnesty report is already based on the information that the amnesty collected from the Palestinian human rights groups in Palestine. 
Но да се кмин политика. When the local human rights organizations releasing reports, so they alleged us as collaborators. <coughs> and people who are serving the Israeli right wings. I am serving the Israeli right wings. I am talking about Muhammad, how he tortured in prison. How it could be that I am serving the Israeli right wings. The major problem is that we are trying from time to time to appear in the Palestinian media but it seems that there is no Palestinian media at all. When the editor of Al-Quds newspaper arrested <coughs> the newspaper never reported about his arrest and when he released we never saw any article about that release and he is the editor of the newspaper on May 97 a Palestinian journalist who arrived from Jordan for a visit to the liberated areas and that journalist his name is Majid Atiyah he sent a letter <coughs> to the head of the preventive security service Mr. J.R. Jibril Raju and he asked for an interview for Al-Quds Al-Arabi newspaper Jibreel received the letter and immediately he called the journalist that I agree to give you an interview and I'm waiting for you in my office in Jericho immediately the journalist went to Jericho to meet to make the interview Rajub asked him <coughs> what is your name he said Majid Atiyah Rajub asked him again what is your name Majid Atiyah you are working with Al-Quds Al-Arabi yes you remember in 94 when you reported about me that I met uh, the chief commander of the Israeli forces Shahak in 94 he said yes I reported about that so he said you don't know that that meeting was a confidential meeting who gave you the information about that meeting? He said, I have my own resources. He said, I know who are your resources. <coughs> your resources is the Jordanian security services. He said, no. He said, yes. You know who I am? He asked the journalist. The journalist said, yes, you are Jibril Raju. He said, you know that I am leading the biggest security service in the country? He said, yes. He asked him, you know that I came from the biggest family in Hebron? He said, yes. He said, you know that I can kill you and I will get Arafat's blessing. The journalist was arrested 10 days in Jericho and really he faced a terrible torture methods we have the testimony and this testimony we are also going to transfer it to the all international human rights organizations to report about that 
we are talking about a journalist. On the 2nd of July, a professor for education and society problems from Al-Azhar University in Gaza, Dr. Fathi Subh. He made, he gave an examination to his students at the university. One of the questions that he raised, what is their opinion, the students opinion, about the corruption under the Palestinian Authority? Immediately, he was arrested by the preventive security services. And what the, the preventive security services alleged him, they alleged him as a collaborator, because when you talk about corruption, you serve the Israeli right wings. He is a collaborator, and he is a homosexual. You know, to allege an Arab man as a homosexual in the Arabic society, it's much better to kill him than to allege him as a homosexual. And I think that the New York Times reported about that. That was the response of the head of the Palestinian Preventive Security Service, Mohammed Dahlan in Gaza. That Dr. Subah is a collaborator at the homosexual. He spent five months in jail without charges. Three months after his detention, we decided as the Palestinian Human Rights Monitoring Group to make an, a petition calling President Arafat to release Dr. Fathi Subah. And we decided that this petition will be sent to the all Palestinian universities in Palestine. We sent the petition to nine universities asking doctors and academics to sign on it. You will be surprised if I will tell you that we get a response only from one university. Birzeit University, 18 doctors and academics signed on that petition. So if the intellectual people who are supposed to build the civilian society are keeping silence today on all of these abuses, so I can guess which darkness future is waiting for the Palestinian community. There is a kind of fear under the Palestinian Authority. People are afraid, but it doesn't mean to keep silence on all of these severe abuses. We are still suffering from the Israeli occupation abuses. Our land I'm Mark Brzezanski, your host for this weekly program, Mideast Realities, and thank you for watching. If you too are concerned about the situation in today's Middle East and about U.S. policies toward that crucial region of the world, and if you'd like to meet like-minded persons, why don't you come to one of our weekly social meetings? I'll be there, of course. Just give us a call for details.